this uh, Native American Day in South Dakota. I salute you, South Dakota. Very remarkable. 866-987-THOM, our telephone number. Manny in Fairfield, Connecticut. Hey, Manny, what's on your mind today? Oh, good afternoon, Tom. Yeah, I had re- uh, recalled the reading up on uh, the Northwest Indians up there in the, the, the Washington State, that whole area where they were using um, for their wood canoes. Rather than fell a cedar tree, they would erect a scaffold around the tree and peel off one side or a quarter to get a slab, a plank, maybe 40, 50 feet high, you know, 15 inches wide, 4 inches thick, and then move to another tree, leaving enough for the tree to grow itself back. Hmm. Responsibly harvest their lumber from these old-growth forests, and every six or eight years they would revisit a tree that they had previously used and take another slab. Wow. And I just thought that was mind-blowing that they would, uh, you know, say, hey, let's leave it standing, take only what we need, yeah. And we'll have more for next generation. Yeah, well, it's like it, down in um, Brazil, there there was a, a tribe of Indians that uh, that I I recount in Last Hours of Ancient Sunlight, um, where they you know they they lived in the jungle and they would they would take a, a a circle of a few hundred yards and fell the trees in toward the center and then you know and basically clear that clear that land out, and then they as as it grew back. There would be different kinds of vegetation that would grow at different yeah. times, you know, and there, there, there is small stuff and the and the medium stuff and the large stuff and whatnot, and 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 they they were they planted things like sweet potatoes and things, but the stuff that they planted was all coexisting with the local environment, and they would live there for a year or so, and then they'd move on to another spot, and eventually, after five or ten years, they'd end up back where they started, and what this did was it actually uh, provided. Uh, diversity and nutrients to the ecosystem that you know the 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 modern humans are the only we we are the only species whose waste is not the food for something else and by our waste i'm not talking about our our excrement i'm talking about things like you know nuclear waste and you know giant steel buildings although arguably over time those will be food for something else they will eventually biodegrade but a lot of what we produce and then the corporate raiders came to the northwest, and our redwood stands went the way of the buffalo. Yeah, yeah, good story. Clear cut to stumps, acres and acres and miles, as you could see. Yeah, there you go. Thanks a lot for the call, Manny. Good to hear from you. Tommy in Mecca, California. Hey, Tommy, what's on your mind? Hey, yeah, Tom, see, I wanted to thank you for this topic of indigenous people, for you talking about that subject here. This is really good. I know that here in California they celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day. Mm-hmm. Up in places like Berkeley and the Bay Area. Yes, there are a number of cities that have adopted it, along with the state of South Dakota. Well, the last island that Columbus left when he took off from Europe was um, the island of Gomera and the Canary Islands. And the indigenous population in the Canary Islands were also living in the Stone Age, and they were completely wiped out by the Spanish, too. And they were actually fair-skinned and had beards and blue eyes and blonde hair. And in a lot of the chronicles, they said that when Columbus and these early navigators reached the Caribbean and the Americas, there was a lot of people that were described as what you call white and Caucasian, and there was also very African-looking people with dark skin and kinky hair. And so I think the idea of, like, indigenous people probably is kind of a, like a multiracial theme that um, indigenous people come in all kinds of colors and that there's a website called whiteindians.com and it talks about the the Canary Islanders and it, it also talks about the People on the other side of the Atlantic. Why and, the assumption uh, that they're like remnants of the Leif Erikson expeditions in 500? Well, or something? probably goes back way farther than that because yeah. um, some of them spoke proto proto Indo European languages, like in Chepotule tribe in Panama, they built pyramids and such. This has more to do with what you think of as like Thor Heyerdahl when he crossed the Atlantic Ocean in right. 1970 in a paper boat. Right. The thing that I found find, find amazing is when we lived in Vermont, there was a society, a little, a group of of amateur historians and archaeologists who who got together every month and they went out and they looked at these sites and 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 I subscribed to their newsletter. I I met I you know I met I was in a couple of their meetings, and we went to one, Louise and I went to one of the sites. There are sites all over New England, and I'm guessing they're all over America. But the, you know this this group was just Vermont, New Hampshire. There are sites all over Vermont, New Hampshire, that are virtually identical to Stonehenge. They are stone sites that are calendar calendar stones, basically, where you know if you stand on a particular stone 
on on the the, the spring or fall or fall what is it winter summer solstice spring and fall mm-hmm. equinox uh, sure. then you know the light hits a particular stone in a particular way and you know that that's that moment in time and and this is something that I mean there's hundreds of these across North America. No, I've seen those pictures of those. Those are definitely in New England, and that's that's pretty well known. And also the mounds up the Mississippi River and Ohio, oh, yeah. and those things. Yeah. There's one theory that there was a, an ice bridge that went from what we now call France to the New World, and people from France crossed the Atlantic Ocean 17,000 years ago, the Salutrians. Mm-hmm. It was called Ice Age Columbus on the Discovery Channel. They showed a, it's on YouTube, and it's, mm-hmm. you know, some of the first people to come here and uh, bring the Salutrian spear points were these light-skinned indigenous people that had to hunt seals because... The ice bridge had gone so far south in Europe that there was nothing left to eat. Yeah. So they ended up in North America 17,000 years ago. Yeah, it's really an amazing. You get into that, you know, looking at, at ancient history. How did this happen? How did that happen? I'm, I'm still also curious about the Neanderthals, you know, the, who died out 20, 30,000 years ago in Europe. And it seems now they're, they're looking at the genetic uh, makeup of them, and they've discovered that um, some people have Neanderthal genes, and particularly it people who have... Me. Red hair, and uh, you know that seems to be something that came from the Neanderthals, um, which takes us back to Greg Bear and Darwin's radio, and the idea that maybe they were even smarter than we are. 